I believe from the last few presentations, we would have gained good knowledge about this, the data encryption standard. In this presentation, we will focus on key scheduling and decryption process in DES. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one, understand the process of key scheduling in DES and outcome number two, we will understand the decryption process in DES. Let's dive into the topic of the day, the key scheduling and decryption process. I believe this diagram is familiar for you now because this is the encryption algorithm of DES where it takes the input which is the plain text and it converts the plain text into cipher text by following this approach whatever we have mentioned here in the diagram. Now the important thing is this input is fed to the initial permutation then it reaches 16 rounds of operations and then a 32 bit swap function and whatever is coming out of the 32 bit swap function is given to the inverse initial permutation function and finally, whatever we get as the output from the inverse initial permutation function is the ciphertext. As I already mentioned, we have 16 rounds and for all 16 rounds, we have separate keys and these keys are referred as round keys and these round keys K1, K2 up to K16 are derived from the 56 bit key length. Now, what we are going to learn in this presentation is the key scheduling. Now, which part is key scheduling? Is it the left hand side part or the right hand side part? Obviously, this is the right hand side part because the left hand side part is dealing with the encryption process and the right hand side part only is having the key related stuff. So, the original key that is used by the DES algorithm is 64 bit key and this 64 bit key is actually fed into the permuted choice one function which converts this 64 bit key into 56 bit key and this 56 bit key is actually given to the left circular shift function where this input is given to left circular shift function and again it is permuted and the output of this is going to be a 48 bit key which is the 48 bit round key. Now what happens in every stage of the key scheduling? That's the topic of the day. Let's demystify that now. So let's first focus on the permuted choice one. What is the input that is given to this permuted choice one? It is the 64 bit input and the output is 56 bits. So 64 minus 56 is equal to 8. So what happened to those 8 bits? Which 8 bits are removed? Let's see that now. Let's assume that the 64 bit keys are numbered as 1, 2, 3 up to 64. So what are all the bits that we are going to remove in order to make this 56 bit key? The bits that we are going to remove are the 8th bit, the 16th bit, the 24th bit, the 32nd bit, the 40th bit, 48th, 56th and 64th bits are dropped. So when you drop these 8 bits, Obviously, the 64 bit key will become a 56 bit key where this 56 bit key is actually referred as the effective key. So, the effective key length is 56 bits and from this 56 bits only we are going to derive the 48 bit round key. These bits are referred as the parity bits. Let's not focus more on this part. Rather, we will focus on how to generate this 48 bit key. So, this is what is actually happening in permuted choice 1. Then what happens? It is the left circular shift operation and the permuted choice 2. So whatever we get after doing a left circular shift, then this data is taken and it is given to the next round, next round, next round. It goes on to generate the round keys required for all 16 rounds. And once it is done with this part, then this input is also given to permuted choice 2 in order to generate K1, which is the sub key for round 1. And then the same input is actually taken by the next left circular shift function. And this is given to the permuted choice 2 to generate K2. And this input is given to left circular shift again. And that input is given to permuted choice 2 to generate K3. And this process continues in order to generate all the 16 round keys. So we are done with this part which is the permuted choice 1. Let's move our attention towards the next one which is left circular shift. So the name itself says that it's going to do a left circular shift operation. Now which bits are going to be shifted? Let's see that now. Let's take L as stands for left circular shift, I stand for round. I'm giving you a generic notation L S I. This left circular shift is going to be a one shift operation for the rounds 1, 2, 9 and 16. And how many remaining rounds are there? In total there are 16 rounds and for these 4 rounds we are going to do one shift operation that is one shift left shift operation. And for the remaining rounds it's going to be two shift. So LSI will be two shifts for other rounds. 
other rounds means except 1, 2, 9 and 16. So this is what is actually happening in the left circular shift operation. Then what's the next part we are dealing with? The next part is the permuted choice too. So after coming out of this, we get a 56 bit input which is fed into the permuted choice too. If you compare here, the input to this function is going to be 56 bits and the output is going to be 48 bits. So 56 minus 48 is going to be 8 and it's clear that obviously 8 bits are dropped and finally 48 bits are permuted. So this is what is happening at this stage. After removing the 8 bits, finally whatever we get is going to be a 48 bit round key. This is what exactly the key scheduling process. We are dealing about the key scheduling in the encryption algorithm part. How to understand this deeply? Let me take you towards the round function. So these round functions only are going to take these many operations, right? So let us dive into the round function. This is what is happening in the round function, isn't it? I'll just compare. You just see here is 32, here is 32, which is 64 bit key is fed. This is what this, the 64 bit key is fed. So after doing this left shift operation and permuted choice one, which I have not shown here, this will be 56 bits and these 56 bits are converted into 48 bits, which is exactly this. So after coming out of this left shift, it's going to be 56 and after permuted choice two, which will be 48. That is after permuted choice two, it will be 48. And whatever 48 bits we get, that's the round key for that particular round, which we are addressing. So let's see the operations that we are dealing here. So the operations that are being carried out at here and here are the left shift operations. We have seen that, right? So the left shift will be one. It will be one shift for the rounds one, two, nine and 16. And it will be two shifts for the other rounds except these rounds. And what happens here, which is the permuted choice two. The 56 bits are converted into 48 bits, right? So obviously eight bits are dropped and 48 bits are permuted. I think things are clear for you now. We are done with understanding the key scheduling process. Let's now move on to the decryption process in DES. The decryption process in DES is the reverse of encryption process. Then what do we mean by this? Say in the encryption, we input plain text and we get the output the cipher text. So obviously the decryption is going to take the cipher text as the input and it's going to generate the plain text. So this part is the encryption part and this is going to be reversed, isn't it? How it is going to be reversed? Let's see that now. Let me remove the key related stuff for better understanding. So I'm just removing this part. Now if you see here, what are all the changes we are going to make in order to get the decryption? This is actually the encryption process. The changes we are going to make here are the input. The input previously in the encryption was the plain text. Now it's going to be the cipher text. And what about the output of the decryption process? It's going to be the plain text, right? So the 64 bit cipher text is given as the input and the 64 bit plain text is the output. Now you may be asking, are we going to give the cipher text to the initial permutation? Yes, let me explain that. In the encryption process, the cipher text is the output of the inverse initial permutation. In order to reverse this inverse initial permutation, we need to do initial permutation. And that is why the cipher text is actually given to initial permutation. Now, are we going to change the rounds? No, we are not going to change the rounds. Rather, we are going to change the order of the round keys we used. In the encryption process, we used key K1 for round 1, K2 for round 2 and up to K16 for round 16. So here what we are going to do. I am going to remove all the round keys that we have used in the encryption process and I am going to reverse it. How? For encryption, K1 is used for round 1, isn't it? Here I am going to use K16 for round 1, K15 for round 2 and up to K1 for round 16. If we do this operation, then this is exactly the DES decryption. In simple terms, DES decryption is the reverse of DES encryption where the order of the round keys are changed. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the process of key scheduling in DES and we also have understood the decryption process in DES. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.